So I'm here at Simuvet Gallery, which is 99 Norman Avenue in Greenpoint, and I'm here for a two-person show. Um, it's called Non-Specific Places with John Cowan and Rachel Gorchoff, and I'm really happy to be here. It's a beautiful show. So the show, I believe, really touches on this idea of landscape, but kind of expanding it. Um, and so I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about what you have up in the show. Um, well, let's see here. I, I have some new work in the show of um, this project that I've been working on of um, having a dimensional form housed in a, uh, I should say, a three-dimensional form housed in a two-dimensional space. And uh, this is, I think, also marking um, the conclusion of a body of work I've been making uh, based on a series of sketchbooks I made while in Los Angeles, where I've been making work based on these, the drawings in, the sketch, in these sketchbooks. Awesome, awesome, Rachel. And John. <laughs> um, I guess I have three or four uh, new paintings I made um, using uh, acrylic paint that works like a dye uh, instead of what I used to do, just solvent transfer. And um, yeah, embroidered canvases yeah. over those paintings. And they're a little bit bigger than I've seen before. Yeah, uh, they're a little bigger. Larger. Yeah. Very cool. Um, um, and Rachel, will you talk a little bit about how you use the clawed glass in, sure. your, in these pieces? Um, well, something that has influenced my work uh, for a long time are uh, the uh, picturesque landscape, or just really the history of landscape painting, uh, I suppose the last few hundred years of uh, landscape painting, and um, something that landscape painters and, uh, well, tourists also um, in the 18th century used often was this uh, device called a clawed glass, which, actually, which is actually very simple. It's just a convex black mirror, okay. um, and they used it they said to make the, the landscape more painterly. Um, it ref uh, the name comes from the painter Claude Lorraine. Um, and for me, what it does is it really it serves to frame the landscape. You need to, you, you, you actually have your back facing whatever it is that you're painting um, when you're using the Claude glass. So I think it's uh, interesting in that it sets up uh, immediately a subjective experience of a of a place. Um, it obscures the place, and that it, it, it everything's sort of fish-eyed when you're looking through it. So, um, uh, so for me, it was a nice sort of subjective place to start from um, when making drawings. The drawings that led a, led to these paintings. And can you talk a little bit mm -hmm. about this piece? I'll flash to it in our <laughs> video. Um, but it kind of feels like it really is referencing um, the clawed glass. Yeah, well, some, uh, s another sort of, um, another, uh, I guess, chapter <laughs> in the history of landscape painting is the panorama. Uh, and this idea of an immersive experience is something that's interesting to me in my work. Um, so for me, this, well, so it is sort of an inverted clawed glass, and in the way that the Painting is curved, um, curved around, curved uh, references how a clawed glass curves the painting, curves an image. Um, however, for me, this also references the panorama in that um, when you kind of stand in the sweet spot, <laughs> right in the you know center, it fills your peripheral vision and makes uh, more of an immersive experience. And for this show, John, you're, um, you kind of have moved away from transfers, and we talked mm -hmm. a little bit about making the studio healthy and not mm -hmm. using chemicals, and I totally get that. Um, but what I find so beautiful is I feel that the color is now, there's an intensity to the color um, that maybe didn't happen with the transfers, mm -hmm. like when we were, um, maybe they were a little bit more neutral. Um, so there's like this brilliance and it's kind of matching um, the brilliance of the threads. Do you just want to talk a little bit about maybe the color or how that's changed? Yeah, um, I switched from transferring to 
to this, it's like a, it's more like painting fabrics. Mm -hmm. um, it's an acrylic paint, but it works like a dye. So I switched because of, I wanted to not have solvents and uh, use those anymore. Um, but I think also, you know, there was a lot um, lost in the painting from, because before I would make small paintings on paper and then photocopy them and transfer those. And there's a lot that was lost from the original painting. And um, when I started painting those several years ago, they were, it was more for myself, like a personal thing. And then I would transfer them and there was a sort of a public art, you know. And um, yeah, I kind of got to the point where I, I thought that maybe I should you know, not that they were hiding, but there's like a veil between those paintings and, you know, with the transfer, it was kind of hiding and obscuring and and really pushing it all into the background. And I wanted to, I guess, just open up more and kind of have the painting assert itself and kind of hold hold its own against the stitching. And, and uh, also just, I guess for me, just, paint and not worry about painting mm -hmm. you know I, I think there's a lot of realizing there's a lot of that process that was not a lot but maybe a little bit that was like kind of like hiding my painting and then mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of wanted to open that up a little bit more and um, take a little bit more risk I mean before it was like you know if I didn't like the painting I just not transfer it you right. know and now it's like, you know, like actually, um, these things you have to wash, you have to set the paint with heat and then wash it in the washing machine. And um, today, I I guess I didn't set, I was just making a big piece and I didn't set it correctly and the piece is completely destroyed. So, oh. you know, that was a little heartbreaking. But, uh, you know, it's part of the process, you know. So, um, whereas before, it would just be fine. Throw the paper away or whatever. You know. Right. So, um, yeah. Now, now the um, canvas or the cloth has a little more history to it. Yeah. Um, well, and yeah, I mean, the other thing is I've, I've found some cloth with like a larger weave, and um, I don't know. I, I since I've switched, my my work has gotten bigger, and um, I think I was tied to the size of the photocopy. A lot, so it was like I was making all the work that was like ten by thirteen because, you know, the biggest photocopy sheet of paper is eleven by seventeen. So it's like you know, like there's things that are really tied to that, and now I'm not so tied to it. So I've been making like larger work, and you know, just feeling a lot freer, and my stitching feels a lot freer. Um, before I was just making things like in the center and really contained, and now I feel like I'm like pushing them out, like hitting the edges and. So it's just sort of like a kind of breaking out, kind of how I see it. So That's really cool. Yeah. Same with the color, too. I mean, a lot of the colors, you know, I mean, if you saw the actual painting on paper, they, they were a lot more intense, the colors were, and then the transfer process, and lost a lot of that. So. Yeah. 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 Well, no, that's really cool. Um, and... Um, Rachel, I think you fooled a lot of people here with the, your materials. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about your materials that you have here? Because, um, yeah. Sure. Uh, well, uh, for the most part, the dimensional objects are um, a, sort of a paper mache clay uh, that I make out of a, a variety of <laughs> materials. Um, and they are on an armature of chicken wire or wire mesh and burlap um, and then I've got a couple of ceramic pieces here and then uh, also the, the what you see on the wall and the floor are a digital print on a, an adhesive backed synthetic paper um, which are uh, so I made paintings on paper scanned them and then printed them on on this on this material and it's cool because it's like up the wall, mm -hmm. it's on the ground, it's really cool stuff. Yeah, they're referencing cast, sh I, I think the, the, the really starting point for me with these were, 
what you think about cast shadows. Um, I think the one feels more specifically like a cast shadow than the other. Um, but I've been getting good feedback while the show's been up about uh, what other sorts of reference points people have for them for these uh, two-dimensional the, or the you know wall and floor <laughs> details. Um, some people have told me that they for, for them reference tectonic shifts or like this shifting of dimensions or this um, or a sort of poten potential energy like it's unclear for them whether something's about to be tossed in or if something's being thrown out. So um, I like how there may be the right there the right amount of sort of non-specificity right. to allow for those sorts of reference points. Oh, that's really cool. And um, John, do you want to talk a little bit about the, I don't know if it's symbolism for you or just geometry, like what maybe, because I understand the um, what the landscape is. Mm -hmm. And then I also do kind of understand that it kind of feels like the stitching on top feels like it's like marking a moment of maybe what's happening in the picture, um, but maybe that's something different. Um, so I just wanted to hear what you had to say about it. Like I said before, I was making a really, you know, geometric form like squares and circles and triangles and they're really just like central and symmetrical, and, and that was like really important to me. Is like like imposing this sort of geometry on this landscape but doing it very symmetrically and and I thought that there was just a lot of like like visual power and a lot of that came from like you know um, like I was watching this thing about like Raphael and you know he'd make these Madonnas and they're like just stri these triangles on this landscape so it's sort of like that kind of like that old way of organizing a painting but just taking out like the the figures mm -hmm. um, and just leaving the organization is sort of like where a lot of that I was thinking a lot I was thinking about a lot of that um, you know like I made some of my paintings were like really inspired by like looking at old paintings and then like like there's this one painting the last judgment that was like really weird and and like the line was, you know, it was just, just set up really strange. And I just had the thought of like, what if you took everyone out of that painting and just be like this weird clouds, it's like this landscape. And I don't know. So it's sort of like that, doing that, and then like putting instead of putting back in the people, putting in like a geometry or putting in something else. And uh, lately, you know, I've been kind of wanting to break out of that and. Like, cause I always felt those like those just basic shapes had a lot of power to them, mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to see, you know, what other kind of shapes have power besides oh, just triangles. So a lot of it is like, you know, get bored making a triangle, or whatever. <laughs> but you know, uh, you know, yeah. wanting to see like what else is possible. Yeah. And um, these 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 things are a lot more like they're a lot less planned mm -hmm. beforehand, um, which again is like. I think for this one, I, you know, I, I mm -hmm. made and destroyed several different patterns before settling on this one, you know, so, okay. you know, okay. it's, it's, you know, kind of like trying out like what works, what doesn't work. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, it feels a little bit maybe exploratory, but I don't know, I, it's also a lot more fun for me, but, uh, you know, just not focusing on like symmetry and order but still seeing if it can have like that power that I felt like those things contain. Cool. The arithmetical world is there for me only when and so long as I occupy the arithmetical standpoint. But the natural world, the world in the ordinary sense of the word, is constantly there for me, so as long as I live naturally and look in its direction. Joe Gross from Simivac Projects, and I'm really happy to be here. What a great show you have up here. Thank you. And um, we were just going to talk about this quote 
um, and um, why it was important maybe to tie it in with both of their work since it's a two-person show. Sure. Uh, I think um, for me, something that I was drawn to with their work uh, together is um, there's this idea of, um, you know, the natural world uh, uh, is obviously an important part of the work here, but at the same time, um, you know, we're there. It uh, we're blocked from it in a way through the abstraction or with John's pieces, um, the the embroidery over top, and um, uh, so I think I I guess I'm I was thinking about how you know we're farther and farther away from the natural world, um, you know, today just in general. Um, and there's an, this idea that we we have to make a conscious effort to, you know, uh, um, commune with it. If, I don't know if the commune is the best <laughs> word, but um, and this idea of Rachel's pieces um, uh, that I kind of like, and I don't know uh, how she feels about this, so maybe uh, I don't, we'll see. But uh, that idea of you know having to actually like get involved with the pieces and crouch and look at them it just it makes me think about you know that effort that we have to make now yeah. to get to nature and also how yeah. we're so far removed from it now so it's almost like these simulations of actually being out in nature yeah. but, and I kind of I like the idea of that um, so I don't know if anything I just said touched on the <laughs> touched on the quote so much but that that's where I was going with that that so, makes a lot of sense really yeah. glad I was able to show John and Rachel I appreciate it yeah. so yeah cool and to that um be a name of the writer that I keep saying wrong. Oh, um, Edmund Husserl. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. I might sure. be rolling you over me. Oh. Um, <laughs> 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 okay, cool. 